Uh, but let's move on to our player ratings and let's start off with Venom in goal. Sevens all round for Vicario yesterday. And look, let's be honest, he didn't have too much to do throughout the game, but I thought everything that came his way, he dealt with with um, high quality. Obviously, that save early on in the second half springs to mind as the best action for him on the game. Um, a really world-class save, in my opinion off the deflection off Romero. I thought on the ball as well with his uh, distribution, I thought he was doing really well. I don't think he could have done anything with both goals, but um, a top display again from Vicario. Yeah, I would say for the first goal, I wouldn't say it was a mistake, but he did get a big foot to it. And uh, maybe himself, he'll be a bit disappointed he, he didn't stop it, but it was a good finish from, from Foster. Um, and other than that, he literally had barely anything to do. Um, it was a great save, unbelievable save from Foster again in that second half to keep the game at 3-1. Um, second goal was right in the corner. So yeah, top, uh, really good display, but wasn't his busiest day. Yeah. Uh, moving on to Destiny, a doggy. Nines all round for Destiny. And this guy, we keep going on about him, but he is blossoming as a footballer, taken to the Premier League like he's been here for the last 20 years. He's 20 years old. He plays like a 30-year-old. I mean, the guy is, is a special, special player. He really is. Defensively, I thought absolutely on point yesterday, contributing to attacks as well. That hard work to get that assist and, and rob the Burnley player in, in their own half as well. Um, absolutely sensational stuff. And... Game by numbers, I mean, 38 out of 41 accurate um, passes, eight out of his nine ground duels as well. Um, and he didn't win any aerial duels, but I just thought he was just a menace down that side of the pitch. Five tackles, two interceptions, three clearances. I mean, we've got a special guy on our hands. Yeah, phenomenal. And I think he was involved in the fourth goal as well. He was just pretty faultless both ends of the pitch. He was so hard to get past if, um, for the Burnley winger to try and take him on. Uh, he was so strong and physical. He kept winning all his duels uh, whenever he was asked to. Um, and I thought going forward, dribbling ability, there was points where he's driving straight through the heart of the Burnley team and causing problems. When he's on the wing as well, he's creating opportunities. He's going out on the outside. He, he always picks the right pass as well. I'm so impressed with his decision making and it was just I don't think I can't remember anything he did wrong it was just a complete faultless display from Destiny Udogin another another really strong showing from him moving on to Mickey van der Ven eights all round from us again I thought it was a really strong showing from him um, he tried his best to keep both goals out to be honest but um, wasn't to be but I thought he was a man mountain yesterday he was winning his aerial duels winning his ground duels um, he's He's sparking up a really good relationship with Kuti Romero and Destiny Adogi on both sides, to be honest. And again, he's another one who's just come into the team and just taken to the Premier League like he's been here for many years. you got to remember, this guy is 22 years of age. 22 years of age, just coming straight into the team. And and it, and like I keep saying, it's like he's been here for years. Mm. And everything he does, he does with a touch of class. Yeah, and if you remember as well, for the for the fourth goal, he spins away from the defender um, 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 in the build-up for the fourth goal and just takes on another one and it lays it off to Udogi, gives it to Solomon, and we end up going um, going and scoring. And he on the ball, he's just, uh, he's just he has finesse and he just every, does everything with a touch of class. I'm so impressed with him. The only negatives I was the reason I didn't give him as high as Romero, which we'll see in a bit, is because um, for the first goal, he was uh, Foster was kind of his man. For the chance which um, Foster went through one on one, he does kind of get run runs around the back of Van der Ven and he gets caught on his heels a bit. And for the um, for last goal as well, he was desperately unlucky, but he he'll, he'll probably feel like he should have stopped it because he actually gets there first, but it goes under his leg, so it was really unfortunate. But on uh, another day, he probably makes the block, so that that was um, unfortunate for him. But I thought by and large again another top top to play from Van de Ven. He just seems like an amazing signing. Yeah. And alongside him, Kuti Romero really taking up that leadership mantle of the team. Nines all round from us. And he has started this season on fire, Kuti Romero. I think we've probably seen four displays from Romero better than any display that we saw last season from him. And we kept saying, you put a good partner next to him, you'll see Romero flourish. And that is exactly what we're seeing right now. He was at his aggressive best, but he's towing the line between being aggressive and being over aggressive. It's a, I saw a mad stat yesterday that neither him or Van de Ven have made a foul yet this season. Wow, is that right? How mad is Romero's that? Romero hasn't made a foul yet this season. Apparently so. That's crazy if that's true. It's mental. It's absolutely mental. Uh, two tackles, two block shots, three clearances. Um, 68 of his 74 passes done, five of his six accurate long balls as well, three, won three out of four ground jewels, four out of four aerial jewels, and that is what you call a pure dominant display from our vice captain, Kuti Romero. And, and, and how can we not talk about the goal as well? I mean, 
a real humdinger from outside the box, something that you just don't associate with Cuti Romero, and it was top top bins. Yeah, top performance from a top centre back. Honestly, he he was more he was absolutely flawless in this game. He, he's just he's really starting to master that controlled aggression, which maybe he struggled with um, for his first couple of seasons at Spurs, where he was just flying into tackles and, and and causing a lot of risk. But I thought yesterday and and this whole season he's been so good and he's been so solid and he's not put a foot wrong. And on the ball he's been a touch of class and he's been playing the ball, uh, playing really quality passes, and he showed again his quality with that goal that that doesn't come about by luck like you've got to have super technical ability and um, he showed that yesterday with the goal and he's been showing that all season with his ability in build up play and I'm so happy he's fulfilling his potential as like a consistently uh, top centre back because there was people doubting him saying he's too rash and you know he's not that good but we everyone who saw the World Cup and who has seen him in when he has been playing well this guy is a top top centre back and now he's got a top uh, a, a top partner with him we're seeing just consistent amazing performances from him yeah moving on to Pedro Porro eight all round from Pedro um, I was worried at the start of the game after seeing him getting burned um, from the Burnley uh, winger the 18 year old kid I thought he was sensational by the way at times but um, I thought after that he uh, he dusted himself off grew into the game created two key chances for us and those two both of those two key chances were just at of the absolute utmost quality first one dinked over the top to Hyung Min Son and he does the one two with Manuel Solomon and uh, we get our first goal and the other one was just oh that pass man you can you can hang that pass up in in a museum or something and just watch it time and time again because every time you watch it it just seems to get better and better and better Hyung Min Son just didn't have to break stride at all to pick up that ball and going forward you're just seeing the value of uh, Pedro Porro now consistently and we all thought you know uh, at the start of the season Emerson got the shirt he was the one that started the first game and we were like you know he put in a decent display Emerson on the first day but since Porro's come in in that second game we just haven't looked back and he's just provides a consistent quality for us yeah and those two passes were phenomenal for the first goal and the fifth goal just on a plate for Sonny like right into his path and that is as well those two passes are what gave us that threat in behind to allow us to relieve the pressure off that Burnley press and if it wasn't for those for that quality from Porro it would have been very difficult for us to take control back of that game because Burnley were just holding us and it was very difficult for at times especially in the early exchanges for Tottenham to, to have the build up and play through Burnley's press but as soon as that long ball played over the top all of a sudden Burnley realised oh shit we actually have to manage that situation because if we if we allow someone with Porro that quality to pass in behind and if we're not in position they're going to be getting a field day so it allowed Burnley to drop back a bit and it then, then that allowed Tottenham to take control so Poro's quality was actually super pivotal when it came to winning that game yesterday and he, and I'm, I'm, I know he's got it he's got it in him to do that we've seen it since he's come to Spurs his quality on the ball with his passing ability and again he showed it yesterday was, wasn't great for the first goal but that was uh, thankfully for him that was the only bad moment and he's being putting in some top um, consistent displays now Poro yeah. Absolutely. Let's move on to the midfield. Let's talk about Yves Bissouma. Eights all round from us. I thought in the first half, I did expect a bit more from him, a few sloppy moments um, and a few careless moments. But I thought after that, he was central to what we were doing in that second half. He was at his dribbling best. They just couldn't get the ball off him. I just love those moments where he picks up the ball. You just don't know if he's going to go right. He's going to go left. He's going to go through the middle. He's going to go. I mean, you just don't know what he's going to do. And he's such a hard player to read. And we're so lucky to have someone like him. I think he's the perfect player to play in that position in an Ange system because he's just so unpredictable and he does things with such high quality as well. You're talking about uh, his tenacity as well. Eight ground jewels, uh, one out of the 16, two dribble attempts out of his three that he won, uh, one long ball out of his three. Um, he was fouled twice. That's another thing that that's so great about him. He just picks up so many fouls because he's so unpredictable. And I just love watching him play. This guy is an absolute magician on the ball. Yeah, I thought first half... Um he did struggle a bit for some reason. I don't think he was at the top of his game. I don't think he was having a, a stinker, but he wasn't quite at, uh, at the very best, assuming that we know he can, that it can be. But once he got to grips with the game in that second half, that's when we really took full control of the game. And that was when we weren't looking back, really. And I remember Brain saying if, uh, at halftime, he's like, well, look, we're doing well, we're in control. But if Basuma turns up in the second half, this game is done. And that's exactly what happened. Basuma just took the game by the scruff of the neck. He completely dominated that central midfield in that 
that second half and that that was it Burnley had no answer and he was showing his quality yet again and um, it, th- thanks to his second half display that's why he earned 8 out of 10 for me and his partner Pape Matassar sevens all round from us I thought it was a good display uh, from Pape I thought maybe probably his weakest display of the season so much but that just goes to show the high bar that he's set so far this season not doesn't go to um, that he, he didn't play poorly or anything yesterday uh, not by any stretch of the imagination I felt like he was stifled by that early yellow card that he got in the first half and maybe he wasn't putting in as many challenges as maybe he would have done if um, that card didn't come but look he was buzzing around like a bee um, three ground jewels, one of his seven. Um, he's an absolute Duracell bunny. The guy just never stops running. And I thought I thought he was tiring as well uh, towards that second half or in the middle stages of the second half. But look, I just love seeing him in the team. He's just got such a good attitude about him. He's always smiling. He's always looking to make something happen. He's always He always seems to get a shot or two off of a game as well. Mm. So um, another good performance from Pape. Yeah, I thought similar to Basuma for the, in the first half, I think with uh, Burnley's aggressive press, he did struggle a bit with it. And I thought he was actually getting a bit frustrated. He made a couple of fouls. He had that petulant moment where he got booked for throwing the ball away as well, which was a bit of a weird one for Sai you don't associate him with that kind of behaviour and I thought in the first half he was struggling to really um, get to grips with dominating the game but like Basuma, he did correct in the second half. He wasn't as good as Basuma was, but I thought he just got back to his base level, which which is very, very solid. A lot of running um, and stopping Burnley from from uh, having counter attacks. And on the ball, he's he's um, he's really solid as well. With he just keeps the play knitting together. Didn't have too many opportunities to kind of make final third contributions like maybe he has in previous games. But I thought he saved his performance in the second half. It was a very solid game from him. And now let's move on to James Madison, the hub of the team. Nines all round for Madders. Another absolutely sensational display from him. And I thought it was probably the best of the lot yesterday from what he's shown in the Spurs shirt. That is astonishing to think about because he's been putting in unbelievable performances week in, week out for us. Everything about him, his defensive just defensive display on point uh, with the amount of times he aggressively wins the ball back and starts attacks for us in terms of going forward I mean he's always just there he's always floating between the lines he then nobody can get the ball off him with his dribbling ability especially inside the box as well you know it's so hard for defenders to make a challenge with how quick his feet is because you know one wrong move and it's a penalty and I just felt like everything that we were doing was going through him an unbelievable goal with the finish which which um, they did get the warning sign in the first half which they let him had that shot in the first half five shots all round in the day as well three of his three long balls were accurate um three out of his four dribble attempts were successful six ground jewels one out of 11 i mean this guy is really flourishing in a spurs shirt another outstanding performance from james madison and i'm so happy for him to get that kind of typical madison goal which he which we haven't seen yet in a spurs shirt but it was a it was been a, it's been a while coming but it was a delight to see outside the box time and space you can't afford uh to give a player like james madison that kind of space and he made them hey with a brilliant brilliant finish you just knew it was going to hit the net as soon as he uh uh, rifled that shot in but throughout the game he was helping with the build-up he was he was coming deep and collecting the ball and um and spraying passes and also with his dribbling ability able to progress progressively carry the ball up the pitch as well in the final third they just couldn't touch him when he's in the box he fakes to cross he dribbles he gets good quality crosses in the box as well he's creating chances he's taking good set pieces as well from corners uh, he had a bit of a uh, banter with the with the Burnley fans they were giving him a bit of grief that Romero scores and he cupped his ears to the fans as well so he has that side to his game um, I thought it was just another top display from James Madison and he's just been uh, again as I've been saying a few players just hasn't had a bad game this season and this was another phenomenal one and moving on to Deki sevens all round from Dejan Kulisevsky and I thought I thought he was good, but I did expect a bit more from Kulisevsky, to be honest. I don't think he was on the level of what Son and, and Manor showed for us on the day. I thought he was getting in good positions, beating his man. Uh, but after he does that, um, I kind of got a bit frustrated with him and he doesn't pick up the right options. And I think his decision making has somehow diminished for some reason. But what I was really impressed with Kulisevsky yesterday was his off the ball work. I think that he consistently wins the ball back for us high up the pitch. Uh, you see it with the two tackles. Uh, yesterday two interceptions as well um three of his uh, seven dribble attempts three key passes actually on the day which i didn't realize and um and his accurate passes were 83 percent with 29 out of 35 so i don't think it was a bad display but it was probably when you're looking at the whole team 
him and Saar were probably the, our poorest players on the pitch, but they still had good games. So that just shows um, how good the team performance was yesterday. Yeah, I agree. I thought he was really solid um, throughout the game. I thought... Um, physically he's our most physical forward and he had to do a lot of the like dirty work when Vicario is going long and he's aiming goal kicks at Kulusevski and he's got to win Jules um, aerially and get it to his chest and I thought he was doing a solid job doing that for the team um, and I thought when he was on the ball his dribbling ability was decent he was really unlucky not to get an assist when he plays a through ball to Son and Son takes a bad touch uh, uncharacteristically and, and the chance is gone so he, he probably would feel like he should have had at least one assist in this game but yeah his, his chance creation was not the level of the others so he probably was the weakest of the front three but I still think he had a solid game Manuel Solomon on the left Sim gives him a nine I gave him an eight and look he was uh, unplayable at times in that first half he really was so nimble on his feet so hard to get the ball off and it's something I think that we've been missing on that left-hand side, maybe while Sonny's been there and Richarlison's been in the middle. And um, he provided for the team massively yesterday, two assists on the day, one with a really nice um, one-two with Hyung min Son. The other one uh, just played the ball so calmly into Hyung min Son's path um, to get the goal in the second half. But... I mean, I don't think anyone probably predict could have predicted how good he could have, he was going to be yesterday and um, his first start in the Premier League. And I think he's uh, earned the right to start the next game now. Yeah, it was a massive opportunity, a massive opportunity for Solomon yesterday getting a start because bringing in Brennan Johnson, he hasn't uh, on the right, he hasn't really been fancied so far in the Premier League with the game time with Ange. So when it, he was given an opportunity to start yesterday and he took it with both hands, I felt two really great assists. The timing of the passes, very calmly picking the right decisions both times as well. Good presence of mind. And I thought he was a threat down the left-hand side throughout the whole of the of the, of the time he was on the pitch. His dribbling ability was a, was a big news I think got completed three of his five dribbles throughout the game as well. Um, and I'm very happy for him that he had a big opportunity to show that he deserves a place in the team. And he showed why um, we signed him and why he, um, uh, why Ange trusted him yesterday from the start. And adding that pace and dribbling to the ability to the front line really helped creating the space and, open, and drawing players in and creating space for others as well. So really good op um, performance from Manuel Solomon. So I'm very happy for him. Exactly. The prophet King Solomon has arrived at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. But let's move on to the best till last. Hyung Min Son, our captain, tens all round for Sonny Boy. And every single goal he scored yesterday was just oozed quality, oozed class um, of the highest degree. Um, and he basically done in 90 minutes yesterday, or even 60 minutes yesterday, really, what um, what, Richard, what we've been seeing to be missing from Richarlison all season in the first three games. So I think richarlison has got to be looking at being like, oh God, what am I in for now? Uh, with Sonny really performing like he did. But he didn't actually have that many touches on the ball yesterday. I think 27 touches on the day with three goals was one key pass everything that he did just was of the highest degree of the highest quality and I think he's taking he's taking on that leadership mantle on the team he's really wearing that armband with pride and, and leading by example and he got the goals yesterday to show for it as well so three um, goals on the day and he's our top goal scorer of the season yeah, phenomenal performance, I thought, from him and Son. It just w wasn't just the goals that led to his performance being fantastic. I thought it was all general play, his little touches, his little layoffs um, uh, as well, being part of the team, allowing us to keep possession were absolutely fantastic. I thought each three finishes, we know what he's capable of in front of goal, and I think he just um, gave us more evidence of that again. He just proved it again, how clinical he is and how calm he is in front of goal with those with that ability to just calmly slot home all those all those finishes, one of them being a first-time finish, one of them a little dink, the other the one running from goal when he's got a bit more time to think about it so three different situations but he come on trumps as well left foot right foot doesn't really make a difference for him um he know we know how two-footed he is um but I, I think for me why Richarlison was shown up was just because of his contribution to the team wasn't just the goals and that's what Son is delivering he's, got, he's just got that bit of quality about him which Richarlison is lacking right now and yes I think there'll be bigger tests for Son I'm sure there'll be teams which don't leave as much space in behind as Burnley did so it'll be interesting to see him in the night in those kind of games but you, look you could only play what's in front of you and yesterday he absolutely demolished them yeah and let's finish off talking about Ange Postacoglu the fans were in full voice yesterday singing his name throughout the game and uh, he gets a nine all round I think he recognised obviously that Richarlison really hasn't been doing it in a Spurs shirt and he's kind of probably been the only player that we could have we could have 
proper criticism about so far this season is Richarlison and he's noticed that he's moved Son into the centre what we've all been thinking pretty much um, ever since the start of the season he'd done that he put Manor on the left hand side and, and did tweak the team and I think the team were much better off for it obviously Hyungmin Son uh, scoring the hat trick Manor Solomon having a top game and um, he managed the game well in the last half an hour once the game was done uh, made five changes throughout the game and I've just got not a bad word to say about Ange and the way he managed the game yesterday I thought everything was down to perfection yeah, I thought he managed the game perfectly. His selection was perfect. Um, to bring in, to decide to, to pick Manor ahead of Perisic, who I think was a very good decision. I'm very happy he made that decision. To drop Richarlison as well. He did what was best for the team. Um, we know what our starting eleven is. And, um, you know, he obviously well, he went for that after what happened on Tuesday night. But we were back to the levels that we were a, a week ago, which was really, really great to see. And the football we're playing is, is fantastic to watch. Um, the confidence that everyone is having is clearly seeping through to the team team uh everyone's having enjoying themselves right now we're playing great football and it's all down to Ange, and he's just doing a phenomenal job so nine out of ten is this uh is this a new manager bounce or is this uh, our level i don't i don't think that it's going to be like this the whole season i do think it's a bit more than a new manager bounce so i think this is i think this is what we're going what we're building towards to be consistently like this and I, i'm delighted what we're seeing i'm not i don't think we're going to be at this level for the whole season especially when we come up against better opposition and maybe we get injuries and stuff but i do think it's definitely more than a new manager bounce i do think we're we're not performing over our level in my opinion i think we're capable of what we're showing consistently but i don't think we are going to be consistent throughout this whole season just yet yeah and when you're looking at it we, a lot of people are saying yeah maybe it is a new manager bounce but with one game a week now especially until January um, we put ourselves in the best chance to to really you know tailor make everything for these specific games more time on the training pitch and how much of a value is that going to be um, going into this season yeah, it's going to be a massive help because you when you have those three weeks when you don't have midweek games and you actually have time to spend with the players and perfect the system it's going to be a massive help and I really hope Ange takes massive advantage of it because uh, it's not something he's not a luxury he's going to have hopefully in future seasons yeah all right well that is your player ratings for the game against Burnley 5-2 win at Turf Moor 